she said the Crown will ask the judge to overturn the verdict in the morning. I'll be released by noon. That's wonderful. I can hardly stand the thought of you spending one more night here. Me neither. Although the warden has extended an olive branch in light of my wrongful imprisonment, he's invited me to a family dinner. Oh. <laughs> Dinner will be served shortly. And you've lived behind these prison walls with your mother and father your whole life. I have. That's quite something. I suppose I'm just a bird in a gilded cage. <laughs> oh, I meant to say thank you again for letting me use this dress for the evening. It's fine. I don't wear it anymore. So, your mother tells me that you're engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, that must be him now. Oh, apologies for my lateness, darling. <laughs> Leslie Garland. Julia Ogden. What a surprise to see you here. Yes, what a surprise. You two know each other. Yes. Julia used to be my sister-in-law. That is, before my brother was murdered and she very hastily remarried. Hmm? Um, Dr. Ogden is an inmate at the prison now. You don't say. Well, you're certainly not dressed like one. I was accused of a crime which I didn't commit and I've been exonerated. I simply need to meet with the judge in the morning. Not much seems to stick to you, I guess. Oh, was Dr. Ogden the woman who caused you to leave the Crown Attorney's office? Oh, come now. It's all water under the bridge. I'm an estate lawyer now. Left a sordid world of crime behind. Look, Julia, I know our paths have diverged somewhat, but I can assure you there's no hard feelings on my end. Hmm? Darling? Thank you, Jane. I'll have to read your book, Dr. Ogden. Hmm. You've written a book, have you? Yes, with my husband, William. I'm thinking of writing one myself on prison reform. Joseph has set up gardens for the inmates and a library. They do have a calming effect. Of course, the strongest deterrent to recidivism is corporal punishment. To be frank, I don't believe that corporal punishment is ever appropriate. Well, considering you're an inmate, I can see why you hold that opinion. More peas. Oh, damn. I've spilled mustard on my jacket. You put too much on your beef. You always do. Lauren, your jewelry is stunning. Thank you. I inherited some of my grandmother's. May I ask about your locket? It seems to be broken. I know. <laughs> Silly, really, that I keep wearing it, but oh. it has sentimental value. Oh. Sarah, you shouldn't have brought that drink to Mr. Hymas. He asked for it, ma'am. I don't know why you don't listen to me, Joseph. Ice is bad for the Constitution. Wouldn't you agree, Dr. Ogden? No. No. Well, I actually have never heard that theory. Mother believes all drinks should be tepid. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I'm sure you're all right, sir. It's just the beef is poorly cooked, as usual. <sighs> Hence the need to disguise it with mustard. <clears throat> ah, Jane. <clears throat> Here. Get this stain out for me, would you? Everyone, we will reconvene in the drawing room in a quarter of an hour. I'll bring up some imperial tokay from the cellar. Until then, I will be resting in my room. As will I. Please feel free to make yourself comfortable in the drawing room. There's more wine in there. You seem to be enjoying it. <clears throat> Mind if I smoke? Mm, I've never cared for cigar smoke, actually. Mm. No bother. Over time, you'll hardly notice it. I was just with Joseph in his study. He's got some wonderful cigars. 
Is everyone coming soon? I've just done this baked Alaska, and it doesn't last long. That looks heavenly, Sarah. What were you in prison for? Stealing the soul of a great chef? <laughs> the beef aside, of course. I think I'll go find Mr. Hymas. I'm looking forward to that toke. Okay. Well, while you're up, see if you can't find my fiance. Hmm? Oh, and tell her to hurry. This dessert will not take long to melt. Mr. Hymas? Dear God! Dr. Ogden? What's happened? I just found him like this. Is he dead? What's all this? Dear God. Uh, Jane, telephone the police I immediately. Leslie? Joseph! Joseph! Mother! Oh, oh, what's going on? Your father's been stabbed. How? Is that possible? I locked both of the doors before dinner. All of the windows are locked. No one could have gotten in from outside. What if that's true? It means one of us is a murderer. <laughs> What were you doing here? I came looking for your father and I found him lying here. Why were you hovering over him? I was checking to see if he was alive. Julia, step away from the body. I will not. The sooner I examine him, the better chance we'll have of knowing what happened. Or the better chance you'll have of disguising what you did. Oh, Lauren, why would Dr. Ogden kill your father? Maybe Lauren is right. Julia, step away. Oh, for goodness sake. The police said they won't be here for hours. They're not coming immediately? Oh, these wretched police. Everyone. Where were you right before Dr. Ogden discovered Mr. Hymas? I was resting in my room, as was I. I was cleaning Mr. Hymas's jacket. I got all the mustard off, I can show you. And I was browning the meringue on the baked Alaska. And where were you, Mr. Garland, before you came into the drawing room and spoke to me? I told you I was with Joseph in the study, and I remained there when he stepped out. Poor man. Oh, well, that's everyone accounted for then. <gasps> oh, God, mother. What is that dreadful woman doing? <laughs> I'm taking this to the kitchen. I need cocoa and a paintbrush. So everyone has their own different... Finger marks, yes. The oils naturally present in the human hand leave the trace of a unique pattern. Amazing. I can see some clear finger marks. Well, now what? We'll lock this in the cupboard, and then I'll take everyone's finger marks to compare. I'll need an ink pot, a cloth, and several cards. <laughs> I love this song. It's one of my favorites. So, how are you settling into university life? It's hard. Not everyone's welcoming. But in here, well, it's better. All my fraternity brothers already feel like, well, brothers. All right, all right. Pack it up, everyone. Pack it up. Gentlemen, what's the trouble? This hall's been booked already by Theta Gamma Delta, so... Uh... Clear out. We booked this hall with a D. Isn't that right? Well, he unbooked it. The party's over, fellas. You don't tell me what to do. Hell faded outside. He needs help. Let's go. Please let us through. We have a medical examiner here. He's dead. I saw him. Just before he fell to the ground, he was walking, then he started coughing like he was choking. Was he alone? Yes. It was like he suddenly couldn't breathe. I waved at him, tried to ask him what was wrong, but he couldn't speak. Something was constricting his windpipe. This doesn't sound right. Run to a call box, telephone station house number four, ask for Detective Murdoch. Yes, ma'am. What do you think, Violet? Well, I see some watery blood on his collar. Still wet. He coughed it up before he died? This doesn't just happen to a healthy young man. Staying late this evening, sir? Yes, Margaret's sister is visiting. She can not only talk for England, but the whole of the bloody British Isles. Ah, yes, you've mentioned her. I'm glad it works out for Julia. She comes home tomorrow, right? Yes, and I plan to spoil her. <laughs> Got some new maths equations to look over. <laughs> 
no biology. No rest for the wicked, Mill Mucker. All right, that's everyone. Yes, everyone but you. Thank you, Mr. Garland. Jane, come here. Where is my gold clock? I don't know. It always sits on this shelf. Where has it gone? Honestly, I couldn't say. I, I can't remember when I saw it last. Are you sure it hasn't fallen into an apron pocket? Don't accuse me. I'm not a thief. No. You are an inmate of the prison. That should do it. Now that we have everyone's finger marks on these cards, we just need to compare it to those that were on the knife. Very good. Shall we? What have you, Miss Hart? Well, a young man named Harold Tandy. He collapsed at the university. He coughed up water mixed with blood right before he died. Well, what would cause that? It's too soon for me to speculate. Mr. Buchanan. Hello, Detective. Were there any witnesses? Just one uh, fraternity brother of mine. He said Harold was alone when he fell to the ground. Hmm. Uh, w was he someone you knew? Not well, but I know Harold's lady friend. Hmm. Well, perhaps she can inform us of his whereabouts earlier in the evening. <laughs> oh, you seem to have spilled a bit of paint on your... I was cleaning up when you called me about Harold. <laughs> I understand you were seeing Mr. Tandy. I told the detective that you two were together. Harold was always so cautious of telling anyone about us. Only a few people knew. When was the last time you saw him? Just this morning, at the library. How did he seem? He was fine. Which is why what happened later was such a shock. And what was that? He put a letter in my mailbox, breaking it off with me. He said he never wanted to see me again. It didn't make sense. I can't believe the knife is gone. Someone broke the lock. Indeed. And you were the last one seen with the knife. Mr. Garland, whatever enmity you still harbor against me, please let it go. This is neither the time nor the place. I don't know what you're talking about. What is that smell? It's, it's coming from the ice. It smells like mothballs. You're right. I think it's camphor. Why would there be camphor in the ice? Camphor is a poison. Didn't Mrs. Hymas say that every time the warden had a drink, he felt sick? Yes, and he was the only one who had drinks with ice. So who would usually make his drinks? That would have to be Sarah. Yes? Sarah, I've noticed something unusual about the ice. Sarah? Sarah. <sighs> Why were you poisoning the warden? Honestly, Dr. Ogden, I would never kill anyone. You are a convicted criminal, though. I served my time, and it wasn't for anything violent. I just wrote my boss's name on some checks, that's all. You lace the warden's eyes with camphor, Sarah. That's a serious offense. I knew it wouldn't kill him. Just make him bilious. The old coot deserved it. Well, why did you have such animosity toward him? Didn't you see what he does to inmates in that prison? Slogs them for the littlest thing. I've had friends left half dead from his beatings. Julia. What is it? Someone's burning these papers. Looks like someone's lists and inventories. I recognize the handwriting. These were written by Mr. Hymas. He was just throwing them out. I used them to get the fire lit. You didn't find the knife? No. Searched everywhere. Besides... The baked Alaska Sarah brought into the drawing room proves that she was in the kitchen when Mr. Imus was killed. Meringue will burn in a heartbeat if you don't watch it every second. I never saw the warden. 
on my word. Well, I am loath to take the word of a criminal, but perhaps Mrs. Green is not the killer after all. What was Harold doing during the day? I think he was with Miss Harris. We know Mr. Tandy was with Miss Harris earlier, but what was he doing later in the day? Well, we was all at the house together. He was studying in the main room just before dinner. And then we all went to the hall for the dance. And why would Mr. Tandy be walking outside alone? Maybe he just needed some air. I don't know, Detective. Right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. That will be all. If I have any further questions, I'll let you know. These are my brothers. I don't think they're lying. You were with everyone at the fraternity house? I had two classes, then I took Miss Hart out for dinner before the dance. Mr. Tandy was new to Iota Delta Phi, yes? Yes. He was being initiated next week. Uh, I've heard that some of these fraternity initiations can be quite dangerous. Not these fellows. They were planning nothing more than making him drink rye while doing a handstand. Hardly what killed Mr. Tandy. But still, if you could ask around just to be sure he was where your fraternity brothers say he was. Sure thing. How well did you know the warden? Well enough. He was to be my father-in-law, after all. So who in this house would want to kill him? I have no idea. Sarah was very upset about her past experiences in prison with the warden. But Jane is a current inmate. For a violent offense? Well, Lauren says it was self-defense. Are Jane and Lauren friends? Yes. Apparently the warden was constantly shouting at Jane how she had scorched his shirts or not waxed the floors properly, etc. He could be a real tyrant when he wanted to be. And yet she kept working for him. Well, I imagine it's preferable to being held behind bars. Wouldn't you say, Julia? Perhaps she'd grown tired of his abuse. I think a conversation with Jane may be in order. I already told you I was cleaning the warden's jacket. Yes, but there was approximately ten minutes between the end of dinner and when Mr. Hymas was killed. And I was all the way at the back of the house, at the wash tub. I understand you and the warden had a contentious relationship relationship that man treated me like dirt end of story were you fed up did he push you too far and you finally snapped he never got that bad lauren always stuck up for me besides do you really think i would do anything that would keep me in prison longer than i have to be i've seen people do all manner of things when they get desperate well i didn't hate him as much as some here oh you know what I mean? Mrs. Hymas and the warden? She hated him. She was always yelling at him. If there's anyone here who's glad he's dead, it's her. We did have our disagreements. Well, Jane told us that you were constantly angry at Mr. Hymas. My husband gave me a beautiful home and everything I could have asked for. I'm happy, or I was. Forgive me for saying this, Mrs. Hymas, but I got the impression that you weren't. I'll admit, living inside the enclosure of prison walls is a strain. Lauren told me you never went near the prison. In fact, you hardly leave the house at all. Why would I? To speak with oafish guards? To teach degenerate prisoners cross-stitch? You don't like it here. Who would? I hate living as we do. And my husband was the most intransigent man on earth. But I cleave to my husband, as the Bible says. I am a good woman. Come now, Mrs. Hymas. Leslie, stop! Could you leave us for a moment? I would like to speak with Dr. Ogden privately. Very well. Please. It was Leslie. What? Joseph 
hated him. But Leslie told me your husband couldn't wait for the wedding. <laughs> he would. I'll wager Leslie also told you that he was very successful. Both lies. So Mr. Hymas was against the marriage? They fought only a few nights ago. Joseph told him that if he didn't get his life together, he would see to it that the marriage was off. But is Leslie really that attached to Lauren? Enough to cause your husband harm? No, I don't believe they are love's young dream. But Joseph was planning on giving Leslie a sizable dowry. Any findings yet, Miss Hart? He has scratches on the top of his forehead and his left ear, deep enough to draw blood. Hmm. These wounds are recent? They appear to have been made within the last 24 hours. Any idea what may have caused those? Hard to say. You mentioned that he coughed up watery blood before he died. Indeed. The only time I've seen that is in a drowning victim. But this man was walking on dry land. Come now, Julia. You really are stretching things. Joseph loved me like a son. You may be alone in that opinion. Well, what does it matter, anyway? Hmm? You know I didn't do this. I know no such thing. Well, I do. As I told you, after dinner, I went to the water closet, and then I went to Joseph's study, and I... What? <laughs> the cellar door. What about it? Well, it's always kept shut. Mr. Hymas is the only one allowed to go down there. And? Well, uh, after dinner, I noticed the cellar door was ajar, and so, naturally, when I saw Joseph in the study, I asked him if he'd already gotten the toquet. But he said no, that he hadn't gone down to the cellar yet. Well, it's late enough that Margaret's sister should be in bed now. That's my excuse. How come you're burning the midnight oil? Well, the nanny assures me that Susanna has gone to sleep, so I thought I would continue to work until Julia returns home. Oh, Mr. Buchanan, what brings you to our station house? Uh, nothing good, I'm afraid. I'm assisting the detective. Oh? Mr. Buchanan was present when a man died at the university. We suspect foul play. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear about that. I'll leave you to it. Good evening, gentlemen. I've learned that all my fraternity brothers went swimming at the pool before the dance. So they lied. What were they hiding? Well, they weren't supposed to be there. It's against university policy. I'll give you three guesses as to why. I understand. Was Mr. Tandy with them? Yes. And there's something else. It's, it's probably nothing. Uh, Please. On my way here, someone stopped me to ask about Harold. They said they saw the Iota Delta Phi brothers leave the pool. And was Mr. Tandy with them? They saw a group of Iota Delta Phi leave, but Nathaniel and Harold weren't with them. So Mr. Woodson, the only witness to Mr. Tandy's death out on the street, was also with him alone at the pool just prior. What exactly are we looking for? Anything out of the ordinary. A button, a brooch, cigar ash. Cigar ash? I don't like what you're implying, Julia. Did you turn out the lights, Miss Garland? What are you doing, Mr. Garland? Stay away from me! Dodgy wiring, I guess. Real pity about the wine, though. Yeah, let's keep looking. Mm. Dear God. What is it? 1892 Chateau Latour. The old man had been holding out on me. Huh. Oh, for goodness sake. Mrs. Hi, Mrs. Shaw. She had this on at dinner. What would she be doing down here? She never touched a drop. There's butter all over it. I don't think she was down here for the wine. Mrs. Hymas killed her husband. I don't know what you mean. Joseph hates it when anyone comes down here except for himself. Don't lie to us, Mrs. Hymas. How dare you? Mrs. Hymas, we know you are in the cellar tonight. Fine.
Yes. I come down here to drink. It dulls my pain. I hate this house. And I hated Joseph. He was a tyrant. But I didn't kill him. Then how do you explain this? What is this? It's your shawl, Mrs. Hymas, with your husband's blood all over it. But that can't be. I, I wore my shawl with the fringe tonight at dinner. This is my other shawl. Yes, but this shawl still belongs to you, doesn't it? How did it end up down here, bloodied? I don't know. I'll admit, I did come down here for a drink after dinner. I heard Joseph and I hid. When I went up the stairs, I heard a noise. And I found him on the floor, dead. And did you see anyone else? No. And I knew instantly that if I cried out, it would look like I stabbed him. So I stepped over the body and I went to my room. Mrs. Hymas, I'm afraid to say this evidence is very damning. Mr. Woodson, you were the last person seen with Mr. Tandy. Yes, I've already told you. Saw him cough and then collapse on the sidewalk. What happened at the pool? You both know about that? Nothing. It took a while to get changed, and Harold waited for me. There was no sort of altercation between the two of you at the pool? No. Harold didn't even go swimming. He said he didn't feel well. I went back to the house to get dressed for the dance, and the next time I saw Harold, he was on the street. Mrs. Hart should have her postmortem completed. I'd like to hear her findings before we proceed. Detective. I can hurt Harold. It's my friend. Harold Tandy did not drown in a pool. Are you sure? Have a look at this. A bug. A pond beetle. I found it in his lungs along with some algae. Harold Tandy drowned in a pond, not a pool. But that still doesn't explain how he was up and about walking when he died. I think I can explain it. Dry drowning. That sounds impossible. A person can nearly drown but survive. However, their lungs have collected water, which later causes pulmonary edema. So Mr. Tandy was in a pond yesterday? Yesterday or the day before. I've read of cases that took two days to become fatal. Well, that certainly widens the window of opportunity. Thank you, Miss Hart. One more thing. I found traces of green paint on the victim inside his ear. We met someone else marked with green paint today. We really should cover him up, Julia. It's gruesome. This is a criminal investigation, Mr. Garland. Now look at this. Ugh, do I have to? The blood on his collar is still quite red and fresh. And? Just look at the blood on this shawl. It's dry and stiff. I should have seen it before. It's not his blood. Someone placed this there earlier. So, someone manufactured evidence against Mrs. Hines? No! Oh! What happened? Lauren found it. This is too much. Lauren, what is it? I felt something poking me when I sat down. It was under the cushion. Did you touch it? No. Your handkerchief. Uh, right. We need the finger marks on it. Well, who put it there? The murderer, presumably. And who is that? It's a tented arch. That's impossible. Well, who do they belong to? Me. You killed my father? This must be the knife I used at dinner. It's not the murder weapon. We have to keep looking. Please, Julia. Leslie! I think it's best if you sat down. What are you doing? This is ridiculous. What interest would I have in killing the warden? I'm about to be released tomorrow morning. I have no idea why you would do it. But you have blamed everyone in this household except yourself. 
I wouldn't put anything past her. She's responsible for the death of my beloved brother. What? Your first husband, remember? Leslie Garland is trying to frame me for this murder, and I can explain to you all why. Green paint on Harold? Are you sure? You had green paint on your sleeve earlier. It was just a silly sorority thing. You must admit, it's quite a coincidence, Miss Harris. Penny, please help us. We use it in our initiations. We paint all the new girls' faces green. Do any other groups use green paint? My sorority is the sister to Theta Gamma Delta. They paint new brothers green, too. Why would Leslie frame you? It fits in with his previous behavior. Leslie Garland blames me for his brother's death. So for some time, he made my life hell. What did he do? He posed as a sequential killer who was after my husband. He tried to keep us apart. He terrorized me. I sent some letters, Julia. I was angry. You ruined my life. You cost me my job at the Crown Attorney's office. That's the least that you deserved. You're pathetic. My brother would still be alive if it weren't for you. <laughs> Look, his cuff. There's something brown on your shirt, Leslie. It looks like Coco. Why would you have Coco on your sleeve? He took Dr. Ogden's knife from the dinner table, and he dusted it with Coco. Look, well, how did he get the knife bloody? Oh, Mr. Carlin, you didn't. You don't understand. None of you do. This woman is, is evil. You framed Dr. Ogden. Leslie, it was you. You killed my father. Leslie, how could you? What are you saying? Of, of course I didn't do it. Did you kill the warden just to frame me? No, wait a minute. This is getting out of hand. Everybody out. I need to speak with Dr. Ogden uh, alone. Will you murder her too? Please. It's all right. I can defend myself if it comes to that. Let's go, everyone. Apparently, these two have some unfinished business to discuss. All right, we're alone. What is it you have to say to me? I'm sorry. You admit it? Look, Julia, I have no idea whose finger marks are on the murder weapon, all right? But I saw one last chance to get my revenge for what you did, and I took it. For what I did? I didn't kill Darcy. But he'd still be alive if he'd never met you. Don't you think it's time you let this go? You're right. This anger towards you has been eating me from the inside out. I hate not being a crown attorney anymore. Running to a state lab is just so boring. Well, perhaps this could be a fresh start for you. You could find a career that is truly fulfilling. I fear marrying Lauren is a mistake, too. My life's such a mess. Leslie. It's not too late. You're right. What are you doing? I, I thought that's what you wanted. You really are a pissant. How does Theta Gamma Delta haze their initiates? That's a secret. This is a murder investigation, gentlemen. We don't have time for secrets. Murder? He had a heart attack or something. It had nothing to do with us. Please answer the question. We paint him green and we make him swim ten laps. In a pond. Grenadier Pond. Why? Okay. <laughs> I'm leaving. I don't have to listen to any more of this. What? Let's go. Which chick? Let's go. This is serious. The detective needs to talk to everyone. Don't touch me. Am I under arrest? You just might be. I can explain. There's nothing to explain. 
You took my gold clock. It was in the dining room, and I've just found it in the kitchen cupboard. But I didn't steal it. Then how did it come to be in your possession? Lauren. Did he confess? Is he guilty? I'm not sure. Lauren, you cannot marry that man. He's horrible. Sarah, it's none of your business. Are you saying that Leslie's guilty? Perhaps it was you. Oh, don't turn on me. It's your mother who hates him so much. I don't know who you think you are. That's enough. Everyone be quiet. Mrs. Hymas, where did your husband keep his outgoing mail? In a tray by the front hall for the mailman to pick up. I'd like all of you to move into the drawing room. I'll join you there in five minutes. Harold Tandy was initiated into Theta Gamma Delta, and it killed him. Detective, are you aware that Chick is Miss Harris's brother? Well, that is most interesting. Because Miss Harris, your sister, told us that Mr. Tandy wrote her a most uncharacteristic letter after they last saw one another, breaking off their relationship. Did you make him do that? How would I make him write a letter? By showing him that you'd kill him if he didn't. You pretended to initiate him to gain his trust, and then held him underwater. You scratched his head with your ring. All right. I had a little fun. But I just scared him so that he'd stay away from my sister. Yeah, Chick wasn't anywhere near Harold when he died. His actions killed him. It's called a dry drowning. And it was at your hand, Mr. Harris. I suppose we'll have to see how much jail time a judge and jury feel you deserve. Please, sit. Mrs. Hymas, I don't believe that Sarah stole your gold clock. Thank you, Dr. Ogden. I believe that Lauren gave it to her in exchange for a favor. What do you mean? I'd like to draw everyone's attention to this. These old letters of the wardens were found in the stove in Sarah's room. I told you I used them as kindling. Did you? Or were they examples of the warden's handwriting used to forge a letter? What letter? I found this in the outgoing mail tray. It's a letter to the head of Port Credit Prison stating that Jane March is pardoned fully and completely effective immediately. I don't know anything about that. But why would Lauren ask Sarah to forge a pardon letter for Jane? Jane, I've noticed that all evening you've been reaching into your apron pocket. Please show us what you have in there. No. You can't make me. You will do as Dr. Ogden says right now. The other half of Lauren's locket. Lauren and Jane were planning to run away together. But, what? Lauren, you told me you loved me. I can't believe this. Hold your outrage, Mr. Garland. Oh, please, you can't possibly believe that I knew anything about this. Earlier, when I was searching for the real murder weapon, I was just about to look in this sideboard when you stopped me at gunpoint. The knife. I'm not a betting woman, but I'd wager if I compared everyone's finger marks against those on this knife, I'd match Lauren Hymas's. You were just supposed to get me pardoned. My father would have found out and ruined everything. This way, we could have our freedom and my inheritance. It would have been perfect. That must be the police. They took their sweet time, didn't they? Why is Jane being arrested? She didn't know of my plan. Jane's sentence will be lighter, but she's still part of this crime. Lauren, was everything we had a lie? Yes, Leslie, you repulsed me. It's rather harsh. I had thought you were the only way out of here. And then I met Jane. Jane. 
Well, Julia, although our night together did have a grisly catalyst, I must admit I did rather enjoy our time playing detective. No hard feelings. Mr. Garland, you tried to frame me for murder. Well. Did you find the murder weapon in Lauren's bedroom? Yes, along with a packed bag. I thought Lauren killed her father for his inheritance and kept a bag close by in case she was looking suspicious, but... Well, I thought she did it for us. So you knew that Lauren killed her father, but you did nothing? She was my fiancé. Officers, take this man into custody as well. What? Are you trying to ruin my life again? You did that yourself. You'd best watch your back, Julia Ogden. I'll see to it you pay for this. Don't keep the officers waiting. <laughs> Violet, I wasn't expecting to see you. I wanted to surprise you. We were up all night. I thought you'd take the day off and sleep in. I couldn't sleep. Neither could you, it seems. I didn't want to miss the class. Oh. Well, how about an early dinner? That sounds perfect. Good. But Violet, do you think we can get to a single date without some calamity? Um, we'll see. <laughs> There's never a dull moment around you. Isn't that why you like me? Hmm. It's not the only reason. Hmm. I'm just glad she's too young to remember that her mother was imprisoned. She missed you. I missed you both so much. I'm so glad to be home. What else can I get you? I'll make you anything your heart desires. Honestly, I'm not fussy. As long as it's not steak, cocoa, uh, baked Alaska, or imperial toke. Right. What is toke? What? Well, it's a Hungarian... It doesn't matter. Were you really up all night solving the warden's murder? Put the kettle on and come back and I'll tell you the whole story. <laughs> <laughs>